Today we're going to be looking at something that was very heavily requested over a very long length of time, and that's uh, moving platforms. Specifically, I'm going to do horizontal moving platforms today, carrying on with our platformer tutorial. So I think most people can handle the idea of um, a collidable platform, such as in the case of our one-way platforms, and um, uh, a moving entity, such as in the case of our uh, enemy objects, and uh, I think most people can quite easily put those two things together to make essentially a moving platform. But then they struggle when they realize that when they jump on top of that moving platform, um, the momentum of that platform when it's moving isn't transferred to the player, so that the platform will just move out from under them and they'll fall. Or another thing a lot of people get stuck with is this, if they make the platform totally solid, you then have to answer the question of what happens when you get stuck in between a platform, like when it moves towards the edge, does it crush you? Um, do you? Do you make it so that your player dies then? Or do you, like, um, does the platform push you along when you touch its sides? Or do you stop the platform when it touches your sides? You have to answer that question. Um, today we're going to be avoiding answering that question entirely by making the collision physics of our moving platform exactly the same as our one-way platforms from before, so that you can only collide with them from the top anyway. That way we don't really have to worry about what happens if um, the platform moves into you, because if it does you'll just move through it, and so on. Um, so mostly what this tutorial is just going to be looking at is how to make it so that the, the moving platform transfers its momentum to the player and that you don't fall off of the platform. So what I'm starting off with here is just um, a new object called obj underscore move platform that is an exact replica of uh, our currently existing one-way platform so as you can see it works exactly the same way at the moment it's all the same code just with a new sprite and um, the code changed in a few tiny places to reference that sprite instead of the the previous sprite otherwise exactly you know letter for letter is exactly the same code as our one-way platform, so make sure you've already either watched that tutorial or you you have an understanding yourself of how you want to implement one-way platforms, because that's the concept that we're going to be working with here in order to make our moving platforms. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly merge a bit of the code from our enemy object with the code from our moving platform, because at the moment our moving platform, as I said, is a complete duplicate of our one-way platforms. So we just want first of all just a one-way platform that moves left and right and our enemy already does that so we may as well just borrow some of that code and implement it into our moving platform to make it move left and right um, if you don't understand how the enemy movement code works or the one-way collision code works make sure you just go and watch those tutorials and then then you'll understand because I'm not really going to explain a whole lot of what's going on here um, because I've explained it in other videos. <laughs> so I'm just going to open up the enemy object first and go into the create event I'm just going to nab all of this code here, copy that, go into, well not on platform, our moving platforms create event. I'm just going to paste that in there and I can get rid of a couple of things because we don't want gravity or vertical movement with this platform so I'm going to get rid of VSP and get rid of grab like that, hit the tick, click OK and then I'm going to go back into enemy, go into the step event and grab, I don't need any of the vertical collision or enemy collision stuff, I just need the horizontal movement stuff and the horizontal collision stuff, so I'm just going to grab all of this big chunk of code, copy that, click OK, the only movement plan is going to the step event, I'm going to paste it above this section, you'll see why in a second. This is the only really important bit of this um, that isn't just copying and pasting code. Oh, and we can get rid of this vertical speed thing, we don't need that either. So now we just have a copy of the horizontal movement code from our enemy and the one-way collision code from our, our one-way platforms. Now because of how our one-way platforms work, they remove the collision mask of our platform whenever the player isn't um, above it. Now um, depending on how you've chosen to do your own one-way platforms, if you've, uh, if you've used, just been following my methods so far, what you'll have to do here is make sure that you paste not only put this chunk of code before this but then go above it and before any of it happens set your mask index just to equal whatever your uh, default sprite ed uh, index is um, basically making sure that um, your collision mask is on at the start of the frame no matter what because then otherwise like you'll just go through walls whenever whenever your um, your platform is actually below 
uh, above the player, sorry, because of this stuff. But um, if you put that there, then it'll make sure it has a collision mask while it's doing its collision stuff, and then it'll check to see where the player is and turn it on or off or whatever. And it'll still work perfectly as a one-way platform or everything. It won't, won't have any impact on that whatsoever. It just makes sure that the collision mask is still there for when we need it. We need it for this specific thing. So if I run that now, this is the part most people can usually get to without too much problem. So they have a platform, it bounces left and right, they can jump on top of it, but as you can notice, it doesn't carry you anywhere, and you just you slip off, and this is the problem, this is why in moving platforms is, is a difficult thing, right? Because you can't easily, or it's not intuitive to how to make that, so it like affects your movement at the same time. But that's more or less all we're going to do, is we're going to make it so that whenever you're stood on this platform, whenever it's, you know, one pixel below you, we're just going to make it so that it adds its speed onto your current speed as a bit of like a, a movement buffer, like an extra, an extra little boost of speed that when, whenever you're stood on it in whatever direction the platform happens to be moving, so it just carries you left and right, but only while you're stood on it. So, the first thing we're going to do in terms of getting that working, I'm going to open up the moving platform object, go into the step event, and out here where it says if instance exists object player, all this stuff that we have for setting up our, our one-way platform collision stuff. Um, in the else condition, we're going to make this a bit bigger so we can put some more stuff inside this else. Normally all we're doing is saying um, setting up, making sure that when we're above the platform, we give it the collision mask. But um, since we've already done that, this is the only time we'll also want to check if the player is stood on the platform as well, because if they're below the platform or inside the platform, then we definitely don't want to be doing any of this. So we want to be doing all this, this carry movement stuff, whenever we're above the platform. So that's why we're doing it inside these brackets. So we're just going to do another collision check here. If place meeting, now that we know that we have a collision box especially, if place meeting x, y, minus 1, so directly 1 pixel above this platform, obj underscore player uh, oh, brace, colors, brace and inside here, um, I could have done this in one line actually, I didn't really need to open these braces but I may as well and let's say obj underscore player dot hsp carry and by putting that dot in there it means I'm referring to a variable or setting up a variable inside obj underscore player um, as opposed to like if I just did hsp carry this would be a, a variable that was local to this moving platform but because I'm doing object player dot it's local to object underscore player instead uh, equals hsp now that will basically give that variable um, the horizontal speed of this uh, this moving platform. Now HSP carry doesn't do anything in player at the moment um, so the, we're going to set that up now. So if you close this and go into the player object, the first thing we want to do is make sure that that uh, variable is initialized so that before we check for it in the step event we need to make sure it you know, has existed at some point or it's going to go HSP carry? What's that? If we've never touched the platform before and it's checking for it anyway. So HSP carry equals zero. Let's initialize that in the player. Then in the step event for the player, just before this horizontal collision section, so after we've calculated all of our HSP speed otherwise, but before we calculate uh, any collisions for it, we're, we're going to add another step in here. We're going to make HSP underscore final. In fact, we're going to say var HSP underscore final because it's only a temporary variable really. And we're going to say that's equal to HSP plus HSP underscore carry, which is the variable that we would have gotten otherwise from uh, a moving platform. And then we want to say after that, HSP underscore carry equals zero once it's done its job, so that we're only actually getting the effect of that while we're on the moving platform. Because otherwise we'll touch the moving platform, we'll jump off of it, and then we'll still have this, um, this extra momentum and it'll never get reset. Um, an alternative way to do that is just make it decrease every frame until it gets to zero, but we're just going to set it straight to zero here for the sake of simplicity. 
Now, the next thing we obviously want to do is we want to change all of these from HSP to HSP final, so it's including that little extra HSP carry. You might be wondering at this point, why not just add HSP carry to HSP? Why are we making a whole new variable? Well, the reason for that is that this HSP carry boost that we're giving to our horizontal speed is a constant speed. If we were to just say HSP equals itself plus HSP carry um, up here, the problem with that is that we'd be adding that onto horizontal speed every frame and you would actually accelerate while you were on the platform as opposed to just moving along with the platform, you'd actually get shunted off in whatever direction it's moving because it would continue to add HSP carry to horizontal speed every frame. So we need this little extra step in here, this this our final horizontal speed that's a combination of our current horizontal speed from all of our other movement stuff and just this extra constant boost that we get from standing on horizontal platform. So in here as well we also need to just set HSP equals zero because we still need to set our overall horizontal speed back to zero whenever we do a collision as well as just setting our final horizontal speed to zero. So make sure you add that in there as well. And then that really should be enough if I run the game. And you see our moving platform there. If I jump on top of it, you can see now it carries me along with it where it goes, pushes me a little bit. If I stand out there, it pushes me back onto the platform and so on. And you can see now we don't, because we used our one-way platforms, we don't have to worry about what happens if we get crushed by it or if we hit it from the side because it's a one-way platform. We only collide from it from the top. Also functions exactly like a one-way platform and still has our code in there so we can drop drop down from the platform by pressing down and jump off of it and like we're carried along by its momentum like that. And we can jump off of it or move along it however we want. It works perfectly. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that helped and I'll catch you next time. Thanks guys.